Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you three different methods for downloading files using PowerShell. So here we are in PowerShell, and as you can see, I've already entered two different commands. And these two commands create variables. The first one is called $URL, and it simply points to a URL associated with a sample file that we're going to be downloading. And in case you're curious about this file, it really is just a sample file. I'll switch over to my browser, and you can see what this sample file looks like. It's just a PDF file. And if you look at the URL right here in my browser, you can see that it's the same URL that I associated with the dollar sign URL variable in PowerShell. The next variable that I created is called dollar sign path. And dollar sign path is equal to c colon slash user slash Brian slash sample dot PDF. In other words, the dollar sign path variable contains the path and the file name that I want to use for the file that I download. So when I download the sample PDF file, I'm going to be storing it in the c colon slash user slash Brian folder using the file name sample.pdf. And the reason why I went ahead and created these variables is one, so that I could reuse them since I'm going to be showing you three different download methods. But the other is that by creating the variables ahead of time, it just makes the download commands a little bit simpler to type because you don't have to worry about typing the full URL or the full path within the command. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at these commands that I want to show you for downloading files. Before I do that, I'm just going to type get child item. And when I do, you can see that right now there are no files in this folder. We have a few subfolders, but there aren't any files that exist. So we really are going to be downloading this sample file. So the first method that I want to show you is the method that I tend to use most often when I'm downloading files from PowerShell, and that's to use the invoke web request command. So to use this command, we're going to type invoke dash web request. Next, we have to specify the URI parameter. And that's URI, not URL. If you type dash URL, you'll get an error when you run this command. Next, we have to provide the URL for the file that we're going to be downloading. And remember, we already mapped that URL to a variable called dollar sign URL. So instead of typing the full URL, I'm just going to reference the variable. Then the next thing that we have to provide is the out file switch. And so finally, we need to provide the path and file name for the file that we want to download. So rather than type the full path, I'm just going to reference the path variable that I created earlier. I'll press enter. And that quickly the file is downloaded. So let's take a look and confirm that the file actually has been downloaded. And if you look at the very bottom of the directory, you can see the sample PDF file that we just downloaded. So the file has indeed been downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and erase this file. And let's make sure it's gone. And the file has been erased. And let's move on to the next download method. The next download method involves creating an object. And the object that we're going to create is an object of type system.net.webclient. And then once we've created that object, we're going to call a method of the object called download file. So let's take a look at how this works. And one thing that I'll mention before I type this is that this particular command is extremely picky with regard to where you insert spaces. So in order to make this command work, you're going to have to type it exactly the way that I've typed it. So I'm going to begin by typing parentheses and then new dash object. And incidentally, as I type this, you'll notice that just after my name, Brian, the greater than sign is red. Anytime that you see a red greater than sign, it means that there's a syntax error and that if you press enter, you're going to receive an error. For example, if I were to press enter right now, the command is incomplete, so I'm taken to this. I'll go ahead and break out of this. At any rate, I'll type parentheses, new dash object, then space system, 
.net web client close parentheses period download file then open parentheses and this is where I provide the URL and the path and once again instead of typing the URL and the path directly I'm going to reference the variables that I created earlier so I'll type dollar sign URL comma dollar sign path close parentheses I'll press enter and let's check and make sure that the file was downloaded and you can see that the file has been downloaded so let me go ahead and remove this file and we'll verify that it's gone and the file has been removed and then the last method that I want to show you is to perform a bits transfer so bits is a service that is built into Windows it bits stands for background intelligent transfer services and in order to use bits you have to make sure that the underlying service has been started so what you would do is go to the Windows run prompt and type services.msc I've already got the service control manager open but let's go ahead and close that out and let's instead just do this from the beginning so I'm gonna right click on the start button and I'll go to run and I'll type services MSC and when I press enter that's going to open the service control manager which you can see right here I'll make this a little bigger and we need to locate the bits service so here you can see the background intelligent transfer service that's bits and you can see that it has a startup type of manual and it's not currently running so we need to start the service the way that you would do that is to right click on the service and then just click start and that's going to launch the service and now you can see that the status has changed to running so now that the service is running I'm going to go ahead and close out the service control manager and let's do a bits transfer the way that we do this is by using the start bits transfer commandlet and then I'll specify the source parameter followed by the URL and once again I'll use my variable that I set up next we have to specify the destination parameter followed by the path and again I'll use my variable I'll press enter and you'll notice that that methods just a little bit slower than the other methods but that's okay let's verify that the file was actually downloaded and you can see that the download has completed so those are three methods of downloading files using PowerShell